Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of A Double Kiss by Ronnie O'Sullivan. Dane reads... There are two choices, win or die. So Ronnie O'Sullivan is a snooker player, he's actually one of my favourite snooker players. I mean, the man's a legend, he's probably the best snooker player who's ever lived. I mean, the only people who could give him a run for his money are Alex Higgins, who's dead, and Judd Trump, who... Ten years time, Judd Trump will be the next Ronnie, but I mean, he's already getting there, to be honest. So... Yeah, he's a professional snooker player. I imagine this is ghost written. I don't know though. And uh, this is the second book following on from Framed, which I read before. It was okay. I actually sent that one to my mum. So I'm going to read you the blurb. Then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs. And then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, the race is on. The stakes are high. Frankie James thought his troubles were behind him. He's busy running his Soho club and his brother's finally out of prison. But when a postcard arrives from Mallorca, he's stopped in his tracks. Is it from his mother, the woman who's been missing for eight years? When the goddaughter of London's fiercest gangster, Tommy Riley, goes missing in Ibiza, Tommy knows there's one man for the job, Frankie James. Just when Frankie was on the straight and narrow, he's now faced with an impossible choice. If he agrees to help find Tanya, he'll be thrown into a world of danger. If he doesn't, Tommy could destroy him. For Frankie James, old habits die hard. One thing's for sure, playing with this gang is no game. But with everything at stake, how can Frankie say no? So let's check out some tabby tab toe, two ta -ta tars So it starts off they're watching an old England match and we've got this uh, Pierce's nickname, Psycho, 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 rumbled through the crowd. The Swiss striker, Turkey Lamaz, wanker, 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 stepped up for the kick. Seaman stared him down from the English goal, his dodgy tash and slick back glistening in the blazing hot sun, making him look more like he was planning on selling his opponent some double glazing than blocking an actual shot. Yeah, Seaman always did look a bit weird. We'll get to the joke about his name in a minute. So what was that all about then, Frankie said. You and him downstairs. Seaman, Jake slurred. I take it you don't mean what's inside your knackers. Ha <laughs> ha, no, piss off. I mean as in David, holiest of holy goalies. When that Swiss prick fired that ball past him, that scouse wanker down there cracked some gag about Seaman never keeping clean sheets. Frankie smiled, an old one, but a good one. So yeah, you, you got into a fight. Here we have uh, Frankie. Frankie. Frankie's quit drinking, and as have I. I mean, I'm on nine months, I think, now without a drink. Although I probably will go back to it later this year. Frankie was up and at and bright and early the next morning. One of the big advantages of being on the wagon for as long as he had been this time round was that he'd started waking up feeling like he'd used to as a kid. He felt alert with bags of energy and piss like Evian, instead of the usual sick feeling with a mouth like the bottom of a parrot's cage and piss like golden syrup. All right, it's been like two weeks. I haven't had any time to do any filming, but we're gonna go through some more Ronnie O'Sullivan tabs. Genuinely can't really remember this book. I mean, I remember the plot. I don't remember what I tabbed out though. Okay, so this bit here is like quite clearly Ronnie O'Sullivan being kind of uh, autobiographical. Um, so he goes, Frankie was hooked. Snooker kept his demons at bay and it seemed to take him fully over. It allowed him to stop thinking about anything else, to just be. Not even running did that for him. When he was in the zone, this was his total focus, where for just a short while, nothing else outside this beautiful rectangle existed. On the green base, nothing else mattered, apart from this moment, this angle, this spin, this shot. Which is very much like Ronnie O'Sullivan. Uh, even down to the running, he's actually written a book on running, which I'll probably get to eventually. We get this line, which as a Stephen King fan I enjoy, especially because this is my favourite Stephen King book. The old man was already sitting waiting for him by the time Frankie got through to the visitor's room. He was nose deep in the stand, the latest Stephen King novel Frankie had brought him last week. Now this is set mid-90s, I think. So is that accurate? I don't think that's accurate. I thought the stand was in the 80s. We get this little joke here, which I enjoy because this is uh, the same joke as in a Mitchell and Webb, that Mitchell and Webb look sketch, uh, where it's set in a bawdy 1950s hospital or whatever, like very carry on style. The doc prepped a needle. Shit, a brick, it was as long as a finger. Now, this is a local anaesthetic, she explained, and you will feel a little prick. It won't be the first time, eh, bruv? Frankie muttered. Yes, thank you, Mr. James, said the doc. Though, if you're going to make jokes to cheer your brother up, perhaps you could make them a little more original. And then we get this, which I do enjoy. This is because um, they've gone off to wherever it was, Mallorca. So we get this. Uh, well, I say his, it's actually more his mother's. They pulled out onto the road. A steady stream of cars was still heading into the car park, but ahead of them, the road was clear. Frankie let it rip, gunning the Porsche along the straight before cutting tight into the next turn. His mother, he said, slowing back down. Christ, I hope she doesn't know what her little boy is going out dressed up in these days. Oh, she knows and doesn't give a monkey so long as he makes her a decent profit, and he definitely does that. She's one of the ten, you know. The ten what? The families who run the island, stupid. Loads of the clubs are run by women who've been here since long before the tourists came. Why women? 
Because the men, the old men, way, way back in the old days, used to leave the best land, the farmland, to their sons, and gave the useless land, the impossible to farm coastland, to their little girls, only now. <laughs> yeah, guess who looked out? Sounds like some kind of rough justice to me. We get this little bit here, because one of the characters, uh, he used to have a problem with drinking, so now he doesn't drink anymore, and I relate to that, because, I mean, I don't know if I had a drinking problem, but I was a heavy drinker, and also an anxiety sufferer, and a smoker, so I've quit, but uh, we get this Adam Ant quote. Because you're like Adam Ant, right? She said, grinning and wrapping her arms around him. Don't drink, don't smoke, what do you do? I make booktube videos, mate. And then, um, he, even though he's obviously quit drinking, he ends up getting drunk, and uh, so we have this at the start of chapter 30. Frankie woke to the sound of ringing. Was it just in his head? He couldn't tell. He groaned as he opened his eyes, and was met by a pristine white wall and translucent curtains shifting in the breeze. Where the hell was he? Oh shit, yeah, the hotel in Ibiza. A block of bright sunlight blazed on the ochre tiled floor. He started to turn his head but grunted in pain, his neck aching. Rolling carefully onto his back, he opened his eyes again and saw that the room had started spinning. No, not the room, just a fan. Bloody hell, it was like the beginning of Apocalypse Now. But who did that make him? The drugged up poor sod who'd been given the mission of bringing Colonel Kurtz back from the jungle. Yeah, that felt about right. The poor schmuck who'd just been thrown into the thick of it without being given the full picture at all. And we get just this last bit, I want to share this little line here. Um, he gritted his teeth instead, the best way in his experience to stop yourself from biting off your tongue when you got hit. The least he could do was plant this bastard on his arse and teach him a lesson for ruining his suit. So yeah, all in all, uh, Double Kiss by Ronnie O'Sullivan. I didn't think it was as good as the first book framed. I would probably give this a pretty weak 3 out of 5, maybe a 3.5 out of 5. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll read the next book in the series, but also I'm not particularly keen to get to it. But I think the next book is the last book and there haven't been any new ones for a while, so maybe that's it, I don't know. So there we have it, that's what I made of Double Kiss by Ronnie O'Sullivan. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.